Good morning internet, this is 8.15 in the morning and we are on our way to the Terracotta soldiers this morning. It's about uh, one hour's drive by car and then we'll visit a very unique place in the world. thing about China is that there's a lot of people and everywhere you go there's a lot of people so we're lucky we uh, found a guide that uh, got us through the gate quickly and of course we bought the tickets online the day before you just don't reach up to a uh, place anymore you buy tickets online but with all these people that visit this place, uh, it's about a 10 minute walk from the gate to where the actual attractions are. And if you look at these gardens, you can see um, they're absolutely clean. These people, they don't litter the place. They don't thrash the place. It is just an amazing to, uh, to see this. Look how clean it is. In the legal post, that's very important. So we think his contributions was a reality now. So before the unified, they. Now, the Terracotta Army is uh, thousands of life-sized clay models of soldiers, horses, and chariots, which were uh, deposited around the Grand Mausoleum of Shi Huangdi, first emperor of China and founder of the Qing Dynasty. This is located near Lishan in uh, Shanxi province in central China. The purpose of the army was to act as uh, guardian figures for the tomb or to serve their ruler in the next life. The site was discovered in 1974 by a farmer digging a well. And these realistic army figures provide a unique insight into ancient Chinese warfare from weapons to armor, chariots, mechanics and command structures. Now, Xing uh, Wangdi was desperate for immortality and in the end, his terracotta army of over 7,000 warriors, 600 soldiers and 100 chariots has given him just that, at least in name and in deed. The site of the Macedonium is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, even if the inner tube itself has yet to be excavated. Now, Xu Wangdi was the king of the Qing state, uh, but he was the guy who unified China around 221 before Christ. And then he founded the Qing dynasty. Now, he ruled as China's first emperor until his death in 210 before Christ. His reign was short, but it, uh, his, this period saw a lot of things. Uh, the building of the Great Wall of China, uh, the royal palace, etc., etc., all happened in this time. 
But he didn't want to die alone. And he, he had this huge thing about immorality. And he decided to build this huge, huge multi body complex, which covered an incredibly 35 to 60 square kilometers. Um, now he forced thousands and thousands of families to come and work on this. Uh, some sources say more than 700,000 convicted laborers came here to, uh, to work on these uh, burial grounds. And uh, although the tomb has yet not been uh, uncovered, uh, the warriors was discovered in 1974 and unearthed and are being uh, restored to its full glory. Now there's various pits on the site, but uh, pit one is the largest one. And uh, it measured about 230 meters long and 62 meters wide currently. And is, uh, it's assumed that more than 6,000 pottery warriors and horses will be unearthed from this pit. Now all these statues are big in life, life size and uh, exquisitely made and uniquely made. Every single one of them looks different. It looks like really, really, really like people. Now the soldiers here in the front, uh, as we see now, they have been already been restored. And uh, further back in the pit, uh, you can see there's still the ones that's being unearthed and uh, they're broken. The reason for this was over these walls, uh, there were locks that was to protect these soldiers. And uh, these locks were then uh, covered with, uh, with clay. And, uh, but shortly after uh, the, the emperor died, uh, there was uh, the enemy or the, the rebels, there was a rebel group that came and they wanted to destroy the rebels and they set fire to the whole pit, to all the logs and things and then some of that collapsed onto the, the, the soldiers, etc, etc. And there was also a big earthquake uh, in that era uh, which further would have destroyed them. But this was, uh, I mean, it was more than 2000 years ago. so. Um, yeah, it is, uh, it is amazing what has remained of them. These emperors had about one or two uh, statues that were guarding their tombs, but Xi Huangdi went all the way. To understand the scale of this, we have to, to think a bit wide, wider. This excavation is about 1.5 kilometers from the actual mausoleum. So, there might be a lot of them between here and the mausoleum still. And they also, it is probably duplicated on all three, the other sites to guard this. So uh, even this one quarter section has not been fully excavated with only three of its four pits having been fully explored by archeologists. I wonder how big this is. Now on the right here, you can see the site of the well. They almost missed this pit, and it was just purely coincidental that they discovered this. And uh, in the middle there, you can see the locks, uh, some of the locks that's been replaced to represent what the original locks looked like. It's amazing now, you're going to ask me, why has this horse, why is there a hole behind the horse? The reason for that is that the chariots was made of wood and they have been rotting, rotten away through the ages. So behind every horse, basically, there's just a, a hole. You can see everyone is unique. And in those days, what was very interesting is that uh, they didn't shave. The Chinese didn't shave. Uh, they kept their hair long. So, uh, yeah, and uh, actually, if you were a prisoner, they would uh, shave your moustache off, which will mark you then as a criminal. You can see here uh, still the marks of, uh, of the excavation and the locks that was uh, placed upon there. And, uh, yeah, these are all the warriors that's already been restored. <laughs> Thank you.
Now you may wonder why the soldiers are actually taller than the horse. Yeah, the rumor has it that uh, the Chinese horses of that time was uh, very small, uh, but they could uh, go for a long time. Also, these warriors stand about 1.8 to 1.9 meters tall. The officers are slightly larger and the generals are the largest of them all. Probably the size depicted their strength. Now, this is the, the hospital area where they uh, get restored to their uh, former glory. And uh, each warrior gets rebuilt. Now, uh, these warriors probably have weapons, uh, real weapons in their hand uh, when they were buried, swords, spears, whatever. And those have probably been stolen uh, for their value and been sold. Also, you can see the earth ramped wall um, which sustained the roofs. Uh, the walls was about 2.5 2 meters wide and some of the remains there. Here you can see uh, some of them that is really, really been uh, broken and uh, yeah, this is the data collection area and then they get restored. Now the, uh, some of the weapons that did survive, the swords etc. is still quite sharp and uh, it still had the imprints of the manufacturer and its supervisor on them. The blue tags is uh, each of them gets a unique identity uh, which uh, then follows him and uh, then he gets obviously marked where he was discovered, restored and placed back exactly where he was discovered. <laughs> Now, besides the infantry, uh, the army includes about 600 horses, 100 chariots which carried the officers, etc., etc. But the mix in this pit uh, carried officers, cavalry, crossbowmen, skirmishers, archers, charioteers, and grooms, which gave the illusion of a complete battlefield of army ready for action. Now, the scale of this enterprise must have been huge. I mean, the firewood to fill the pottery kilns to make the figures, not to mention the countless tons of clay from local deposits which was needed to make these figures weighing up to 200 kilograms each. So beside the breathtaking finished result, the undertaking of this was a triumph of organization and planning on its own. Now, this is the intensive care unit of it where they really, really repair the broken ones. Now, much effort was made to render each figure unique, despite all of them being made from a limited repertoire of assembly body parts made from molds. Now, these parts are about 7.5 centimeters thick and consisted of a head, torso, leg, other leg, acting as a plinth, two arms and two hands. Faces and hair in particular were modified to give the illusion of a real army composed of unique individ individuals. Even if it was a reality, there was only eight types of torsos and heads. Hands too were modified with straight or bent fingers and chains in the angle of the thumb and wrist. The fingers were not glazed but were lacquered to protect them and painting using bright colors. Traces of the red pigment remained on some of the figures. It's astonishing to reflect that all of this almost infinite variety and realism was never intended to be seen by anybody.
Now, pit number two looks a whole lot different than pit number one. Uh, and uh, restoration here isn't as far advanced. You can see a lot of these still doesn't have head on, heads on, etc. But pit number two uh, looks like more like the officer's quarters. This is uh, not soldiers, and they are facing each other, which means they are in conversation, uh, planning the battle or something. And also around pit number one, um, there's more horses, etc. that's been found here. Around this area also, as they come closer to the tomb, they found real artifacts, uh, wooden boxes that's been buried with uh, a little lot of artifacts, uh, exotic birds, etc. And they also found a lot of skeletons in graves, which either uh, were laborers that died here or uh, yeah, maybe concubines. Remember this king had about 6,000 concubines and when he died, all of them had to die with him. That's uh, what I understand. Yeah. Some pictures also uh, depict because they couldn't preserve the colors. So uh, there's some pictures of what the, the painted hands looked like uh, when they discovered them and what the shoes looked like. Um, very much uh, colorful when they uh, when they were made, a lot and a lot of detail um, into the various uh, parts of the bodies, like the fingers around these uh, fingers around the weapon and a pair of shoes. Uh, really, really, really detail that went into this.
So we're uh, on our way to pit four, and uh, you can see there's quite a bit of distance between one pit and the other one, so definitely must be something in between still undiscovered. Pit four is empty. Nothing, there's walls, but there's nothing in between. So the soldiers probably never been done. This is pit three. Now they've just, you can see there's fresh excavations being done. And you can see the logs there. Uh, the locks still remain in place with the sand on top. Um, and they're excavating here very, very slowly. So pit 3 shows more or less uh, what it's looked like before uh, they uncovered the, the, the logs. And uh, here the logs are, are more uh, preserved than it uh, was in pit 1. So yeah, lots of discovery lying ahead here. We exit uh, the terracotta soldiers and uh, we're doing a quick stop at the shop where the girls getting told about jade and whatever. Thank you. Next time. Okay. For you when they got here. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. Uh, then we get hungry. Now, time to eat something at the famous KFC. We're going to end this video here. And while we're uh, negotiating the traffic back to the place we stay, we hope you like this video. If you do, please give us a big thumbs up and uh, subscribe. It's free and you can see the next nice adventures we do here in China. Goodbye. Some sort of